In this video, I want to cover the basics of baking inside of Marmoset as well as ways that you can create a screw effect and bake those and bake that onto your material. Now, the screw effect, kind of like a, what you see here, has a couple different uses. One, obviously, being a screw and just giving in some free detail that kind of just make it not look like a straight cylinder. And another big one that you see commonly is rifling inside of a barrel of a firearm. Now those are more of just kind of these little details that kind of give that your model and texturing a slight bump up. So that way you can just get more out of it. And it's just that extra little piece to the puzzle that kind of really completes it. So we're going to go ahead and begin. I'm going to create a new Marmoset scene and go right into Blender inside of Blender, let me just delete everything, and we're going to start from scratch here. I'm going to delete all the old files, and we are good to go. So, I remember screen capture keys this time. So we're going to Shift A, create a new cylinder. For the vertices, let's do 18. We can keep it relatively low. And then we want to go ahead and set this up. So I'm going to go into Front View with Number Pad 1, and bring it up to where it's flush on the uh, z-axis and I'm gonna set my origin to 3d cursor if you don't have that bound to a quick key you can just press f3 and do set origin origin to 3d cursor it's the same thing and then we want to go ahead and shape this up a bit so I'm gonna go ahead and scale mine down and then scale it on the z to go up Like so. And I'd say that gives a let's go up a little bit higher. About like that. I'm gonna go down another half. I'm just being kind of nitpicky here. So that's where I'm gonna leave it. So I'm gonna press Ctrl A and apply the scale. Now I also want to right click, set it to smooth shading, go down here to object data properties, normals, and check auto smooth just so we don't have any of those annoying little shading issues that have come with the, well, by default. And I want to go ahead and rename this from cylinder to screw underscore low. And doing this is important in Marmoset when you go to create a bake project and try to load. Because otherwise, if you do not have it named or anything like that, with underscore low or underscore high, it's not going to load it properly. Or actually, it's not going to load it up at all and set it up for you. You'd have to do it manually. But next up, I want to create a screw head. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this face right here because it's no longer needed. So I'm going to go into edit mode, press 3, delete faces. Go to object mode, shift A, mesh, cylinder. Change the vertices to 6. And do the exact same thing. Put the origin point right there at the base. And doing this allows us to easily snap it to this height right here. So I can go up here and change my snap to to vertex. Press G, Z. And when I press left control with my mouse right here, as you can see, it snaps it. So now I can just scale it down on the Z axis. Let's scale it down a little bit altogether. And I'd say that looks okay. So I'm gonna press control A and apply the scale. And I'm actually ready to go ahead and join this. So I'm gonna click on the head then shift click to select the cylinder and press control J. Or sorry, to, or screw low and press control J to join. And here we have our screw. This is what we're gonna be altering. Now we can add a little extra detail here if we wanted to. And actually I'm gonna do that. Yeah, I'll do that right now. So I'm gonna go into edit mode, go over here to modifiers, add modifier, add a bevel, limit method set to weight, then we go into edge select, select the top face, shift select, select the bottom face so it gets all these edges around the corners. Go to item and crank up the mean bevel weight. I want to lower the amount. I do 0.2 just to give us very subtle uh, chamfer going. I'm not going to bother adding any more segments. That's all we need for our low poly. So whenever you're trying to bake smoothness, you Generally, I learned this from Josh. I think it's 
it's like Josh Gando, whatever his YouTube channel is. It allows for a much improved bake whenever you're looking at the lighting and all that kind of stuff and reflections to have a slight chamfer instead of a harsh edge that we would normally have like this. So that little bit, even just having a slight chamfer, makes a massive difference. So next up, let's go ahead and duplicate this. So I'm going to press Shift D, hide the old one, and rename the new one to underscore high. That way it'll correspond to Marmoset. Now I want to make the screw, or the threads, that go up this portion. So I'm going to Shift A, Mesh. I want to do it a little differently. I'm going to add a cube. Or better yet, you can even just go Mesh, add a plane, go to Side View, make it vertical. Then, again, we want to snap it up here. So I'm going to snap it to the height, or right where it starts. However, I don't need to do that just yet. I want to actually scale this down a good bit. About like so. Control A to apply the scale. And bring it up just like so. And simply origin to 3D cursor. So next up, I want to go into edit mode. With the plane still selected. Press G then X to go over on the X axis to move it just outside. And I want to move it to where it's just barely intersecting our screw here. Then I'm going to add a modifier. Add the screw modifier. And I need, I need to apply the rotation, so control A, rotation. Go back into edit mode. I want to crank the screw up. Do somewhere along the lines of here. And I'm just going to crank the iterations up. So that way it fills it. So here's roughly what we're working with. And we can alter this very easily. So I'm going to scale it down on the Z axis to close them in. And when I do that, I want to lower the distance between them, so give it a more finer thread. And that looks quite ugly, so I want to bring this inward a bit so it's not so far out and aggressive as you can kind of see. So what happens if I move it on in on the uh, scale on the x-axis? It really thins up. So as you can see, but now we have the problem of a gap, but whenever you have that, you can just press G the next and move it inward and it brings it all in to wrap around our screw. So I'm probably going to keep, I'm going to actually scale it down a little more on the z-axis. I'm going to move it down a little bit and bump up the iterations. That way it stops right about there. Now I want to go ahead and add more detail, give this some a little bit of curvature to it so it looks more visually pleasing. So I'm going to control R to add some loop cuts. I'm going to add three. Go to vertex by pressing one or to clicking up here. Click the middle, drag out on the X, and select the middle two. And kind of give it a rough to get these two vertices probably really aren't going to actually be needed in this case. We're just going to do one loop cut. And just have it kind of looking about like so. So something very simple. And I'm going to crank up the steps in the viewport to 100. Make it a lot smoother all around. So we can kind of really see what, what it's going to look like. And I don't know. Let's see if it makes much of a difference at all. I'm going to do that just so they're a little bit rounded off. I'm trying to get kind of, I'm trying to think about what it's going to look like when it's actually baked, not really what an actual screw or bolt threads are going to look like, because otherwise it would be a bit sharper. So I'm going to leave it like this, and I'm pretty much happy with it. So now the only thing we have left to do is pretty much apply this. So I'm going to rename this one to Threads underscore back for backup. Shift D to duplicate. And rename the back or the duplicate back to threads and simply apply the modifier. So now I want to fill in 
these faces right here. So I'm going to press select that, press F, 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 F to fill them in. And same thing at the one up at the top. And then I want to take this end and I want to kind of make it blend in so it's not such a harsh stop to the screw itself or the this is more along the lines of a bolt anyways so I'm going to click here press G then on the X axis press control then select all three of these GX control and all of these again GX control oops missed one control so that way we get this result I'm going to take this, I'm going to press G then Y, and drag it way out. Well, I'm pretty much going to drag it G, Y, until it completely is hidden like that. So that way it looks kind of along the lines of this, and it blends in a little bit better. Now I could probably take this a bit farther out, and just move it in on the Z, like so. And let's see if that's any different. It is a little bit, but not by much. So that's where I'm going to leave that. Go down here to the start, the first thread, and we're going to do the exact same thing. And I got one out of place there. And we're just going to move it. So G and Y, I do not have them selected. So if you notice here, there's actually two vertices kind of in the same place. So I'm gonna press A to select all, press F3 and search for merge, and we're gonna merge by distance. And as you can tell that automatically, even at a very low distance, it merged these together like so. So it did five of them. Not sure where the fifth one is because I see. Nope, that is five. So we're going to take, just select all these, press G then Y to drag these way out, then G and X to bring them back in, and there's kind of our start. So that is still a little bit aggressive, but again, this is just more so for uh, example. So here we have some threads. You can do whatever you want to them, clean them up however you like. And the one thing we want to do now is unwrap our low poly to make sure that that is done, as well as join our threads to our high poly. So I click the threads, shift select the high poly, press control J. We still have our bevel modifier on, so we're going to go to edit mode. And we already have these uh, edges weighted, so I'm just going to open up the segments more. So I'm going to do... I'm just going to do three, four segments. Eh, it doesn't really make much of a difference. Anyways, make sure to shade smooth. And we are good to go on our high poly. Go back to our low poly. And we're going to go to edit mode. Press A to select all. And we're going to press U. Smart UV project. I like setting my island margin to 0.03 and hitting OK. And this is the lazy way to unwrap it because I'm not too concerned about it. But we are ready to go ahead and bring these into Marmoset. I'm going to go to File, Export, FBX. Settings are going to be Selected Objects. Object Type is going to be Mesh. Geometry. Set Smoothing to Face. Uncheck Bake Animation. And we're going to name this Screw underscore Low. Do the exact same thing for our high poly. So screw underscore high. Now there's one thing I want to check real quick that I noticed with the screw modifier. So if I click up here and go to face orientation, blue are correct are our outside faces. Red is the inside. So if I go into the screw, as you can see, now the screw head is red, but this side's blue. So our threads are inside out. And the way you can kind of see that is if we go up here and check back face culling, as you can see, they are kind of, they're see-through. So we need to make sure we fix this. So I'm going to select it, go to edit mode, make sure, and press L to select all on the threads. 
mesh, normals, flip. And now we are facing the correct direction. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and export, replace our high poly, and go into Marmoset. So in Marmoset, we're going to go over here to our scene, right click, add a baked project, click load, select our high and low poly. It's going to orient and set everything up for us. And from here, what we can do is we can go ahead and we're going to check normals. And I also want to bake a material ID. And that's going to be so we can make some adjustments to the threads themselves and have them be on a kind of a, a, a separate, separate material while still being part of the same UV layout. So we're going to go in, back into Blender real quick. Go to materials. Go to edit mode. Create a new material. This one's going to be M underscore through. Create another one. M underscore threads. Now I'm going to press L to, to uh, select the screw head and L to select the cylinder portion. I don't know what that would actually be called. Select M underscore screw and press assign. Then I'm going to press control I to invert my selection. So I'm just selecting the threads. Click M underscore threads and hit assign. So now when I hit select for the threads and select for the screw, it does it correctly. So base color for the screw is going to be green. Base color for the threads is going to be red. File, export, replace the high poly. Back inside of Marmoset, as you can see here, it created the material so I can delete this default underscore high material. And we have our two materials for our high poly. And just to be safe, I'm going to go ahead and reload both of these uh, low and high poly just to make sure we're safe there. Now, under Maps, I'm going to select Material ID, so it also bakes out the Material ID. Under Output, we're going to change the path, so I'm going to set mine to Marmoset Tutorial, and give it a name of Screw. Change the format to Targa. And now we can press P to preview it. And obviously there's some issues we have to fix, clearly. But for now, I'm just going to go ahead and hit Bake. And this actually gave us a better result than the preview. So I'm not sure why the preview was so far off, but there's still some issues we have to fix. So if we click on the low for the low poly, uh, one thing we, we can actually try to do is I feel like the cage is not far enough out. So yeah, as you can see, the high poly, the threads go past the cage. So I'm going to change the max offset so it goes just outside of the cage, or the threads are just inside the cage and hide the high poly. Now as you can see that gave a big difference, so if I shrink that back down, here's our old, and here's the new. Like that. <clears throat> Let me reposition that real quick, I just want it to be just a little bit bigger than there. And those are all inside. So here's the improved. And now what we can do is we can also go ahead and click on Paint Skew. And we want to fix, did not mean for that to happen, we want to fix these little issues around the thread. So if I paint over top and release, as you can see, it does improve them visually. So I'm going to go ahead, make it bigger, we're going to paint the threads. So these are the threads right here and here. So we're just going to paint these all black. So I'm going to crank up the size and just do a quick brush over to get the majority of it. While being careful not to go into other portions. It would also probably help and make sure you have your flow up to 100. Okay, once we have that, lower the size of the brush a good bit. And I'm going to move this window out of the way. And continue painting over spots that I missed, like that. And there. This entire section. I'll get that in the little view up there. That is right. 
that's right in there, I think, in there. So I'm going to go ahead and try to get those real quick. Okay, there's the one. Get this guy. And we're good to go. We've already started painting in the bottom here, so I'm just going to go ahead and finish that out. And there we have it. So now if we look at it, here's the result. And that looks a good bit better to me. Like we have a slight issue up here. Let's see what happens when we try to skew it. And that just makes it worse. So that is going to be our painted result. But now I want to go ahead and just hit bake. And everything should be good to go and saved. So let's look at our normal map. And then we'll look at the material ID to make sure everything's okay. So there's our normal. Looks fine. And let's view the material ID. And that also looks fine. So we're good to go. So let's clean up our project. We can go ahead and completely remove the bake project and all three materials because we already have our uh, map saved. We're just going to import the model and re-import the screw underscore low. Right click, create a texture project, grab our default material and drag it into linked materials to link it. We're going to click for our normal, add the normal, and add our material ID. Now the reason for the material ID is, let me go ahead and find steel real quick, or steel brushed. I drag and drop it, you can see we have, why is that going all the way up there? Did I miss, mess up something? No, because height's still the same. So I'm not entirely sure. That's just a weird baking issue up there, so I'm not worried about it. Anyways, we have two sections. We have our threads and we have the normal screw. So I can drag and drop the steel onto the screw portion, go over here to layers, double click to rename this one to screw, do the same thing again onto the blue, and rename this one to threads. Here we can do some adjustments as we see fit. So I'm going to click this little arrow here, and I want to go ahead and brighten up the threads a bit and the screw some. Increase the roughness a bit on both, especially the threads. Actually, better yet, the threads probably be a little more reflective. And here we kind of go. So, just to give a rough, I guess, here's what our low poly screw looks like from even a relatively close-up distance, it still looks like there's some threads. So if we go back to roughly probably how we would be looking at it in-game, as we can see, or even harder with ray tracing, but it looks like there's actual threads cut into the screw, even though the geometry itself is quite flat. Then if we look up here where we added our chamfer, this looks like it's nice and rounded. It doesn't look like it's just a normal chamfer unless we go really close and get to that side view where we can actually see. So that's the reason we add the little chamfer there, and it makes it look like it's actually got some roundness to it, and it's not just a really harsh edge with some normals baked on. So that's why we go ahead and add the chamfer. And I think that's pretty much it. And I've been trying to tinker... Eh, well, it's a little too late. Never mind. So all we're going to do now is export our textures, bring them into Unreal Engine, and set this up, and just see what it looks like inside of the engine. So if we click on our texture project, scroll all the way down, I'm going to change the output, do a set tutorial, create a new folder, I'm just going to call this one textures, and for the file name I'm just going to do screw, and we have our albedo, our normal, and our mix map with our red channel being occlusion, green being roughness, blue being metallic, 
And I'm going to do a low res of about 1024. It's not really that low for this case because how small this should actually be. I'm going to hit export all. Inside of textures, I have my textures. So I'm going to go into Unreal Engine. Import my screw underscore low. Import. Drag and drop my textures. Open the mix map. Uncheck sRGB. Hit save. Create a new material. Let's name this one M underscore screw. Open it up. We're going to drag and drop our three textures right into here. And plug them up. So here's our albedo. Here's our mix map. And here's our normal. Place them accordingly. Plug RGB from the albedo to base color. RGB from normal to normal. RG or red from our mix map to occlusion. Green to roughness. And blue to metallic. And hit save. Here you can see our material with all the information baked on. We open up our screw underscore low. Let's go ahead and search for screw. And here we have it. So here's our screw. So it's a really a bright environment. I'm going to drag it out into the world. Wow, that's actually a lot bigger than I was expecting. I was expecting, you know, that maybe, not a monster. <laughs> Anyhow, let's uh, scale this down to like 0.01. Or 0.1. Now even that's going to be big. So roughly, I guess, would be 0.05. So this would probably be roughly the uh, size of the screw, or the bolt in this case. I keep calling it a screw, I don't know why, just because that's what I have everything named. And you can see, I'll go ahead and just angle it up so you can see the threads a little better in the light. I'm going to go ahead and quickly build my lighting, so I'll see you back here in a minute. Okay, our lighting has been built, and here is our screw or bolt. And that looks actually quite nice. Even up close with a relatively large bolt, it still looks like the threads are actually part of the geometry. And if we go back to probably the about the width we'd be looking at it, we can see even though it's quite a big guy, it still has some threads cut into it. So what I'd probably do is I'm going to go back into Marmoset. I'm going to grab our threads. I'm going to darken them a decent bit. And then re-export the textures back into our Unreal Engine. I'm going to select our textures and re-import. And that darkened up the threads a bit so they're more visible. And now we can kind of see them a little bit better. So what I would probably do for future reference, let me get this up closer to head height, is I would probably make the threads a little bit farther apart so there's a bigger gap between them and I would make them a tiny bit thicker as well. So the reason behind that would be it would probably be a little bit easier to see them visually because this is quite a large bolt and we're fairly close to it. We're at the kind of the edge of our capsule and if I go as close as I can with my capsule you can see the threads okay but they could be a good bit more pronounced if the threads were spaced farther apart and same thing is if they were just uh yeah that's actually probably really it just space them farther apart because having them this close when you go to bake was probably a bad idea so if i were to take it and here's my threads now the backup oops And let's go ahead and lower the iteration some. Yeah, that's right, they're all still still flipped. Let me quickly invert. There we go. And crank up the distance between them. So that went from point out or point what did that go from point one something to point two? Let's go to point one five. And let's bump it up to point one eight, give that for the distance, and do one more iteration. Then we're going to take this and scale it up on the z axis to make it thicker. 
do one more iteration. Let's get it down slightly. About like this. So if we did this instead of that, this would probably be a lot better, in my opinion. So I'm going to go ahead and pause here and redo it with this threading, and I will show you the result. Okay, so I am back and made the change here in Marmoset. And I went ahead and exported my textures. I'm going to go ahead and re-import them so we can try to see the difference. So I'm going to select all three of these, right-click, re-import with a different... Let's see, can I do that? Okay, right-click, re-import with new file. Or we're going to change it to Bolt Albedo. Same thing with this guy, our mix map, then our normal, like so. And here we go. Now let's look at it. And now you can see the difference. The threads are much more pronounced, and it'll probably be even a little bit better if I went ahead and uh, probably did a little bit better with the color work like I did on the previous one. But as you can see, they're much more pronounced. You can walk right up to it and say, and easily see, hey, this ha this looks like it has threads, instead of just looking for it and struggling to find it visually. So, anyways, this is going to conclude this tutorial. And as usual, all of the files used here will be... I forgot to click on and delete it first. Uh, where is it? There it is. All of the... All, yeah, if I can even speak. All of the files that were used are going to be saved here for reference. So here we have our high poly and low poly, the new one. Here we have the old one with the old textures. Move those out of there. And then we have the new right in here, the blend file, all the textures that you need just for reference in case you're trying to look through the project and kind of see how things are done cuz again this is try to this is for learning purposes so i'm just kind of skimming through stuff anyways if you like what i'm doing doing and you want to help support me you can find a link to my patreon in the description and if you have any questions or anything like that you can also leave or uh, join my discord that is also linked below and i will try to try to help you the best i can so, as always, I will see you in the next video.